Draw me, draw me. 
wonderful. Amen. I said his name is wonderful. Amen. There's just something about the name of Jesus. Amen. When we begin to think about that name, when we begin to just let it stir up and bubble up in our spirit, that name of Jesus. Amen. There's just something about that name. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. I get deliverance in the name of Jesus. I get joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your name. Amen. Hallelujah. We were baptized. He put his name on us. We are the people called by his name. Amen. Called to be his own. And what a privilege it is to be known. Amen. By the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for these needs. Amen. You see them here on the board. Needs of miracles. Amen. We need healing in in these situations. Amen. And we know. We know that when we go to Him in prayer and when we ask God anything in His name, amen, that He hears us and that He answers. Amen. This is not just a Sunday morning ritual. It's not one of those things that we do on a Sunday morning to check the box and say, okay, we took up prayer requests. But we come to Him in faith. In faith, believing that when the people of God, amen, lift their voices to Him in prayer, that heaven moves, amen, that heaven moves, amen, and that he answers, amen. If there's any needs in the church, we invite you to come up to the front. Let us anoint you with oil according to the scripture, amen. The prayer of faith will save the sick. Lord, we love you today and we praise you, God. Touch Dennis Nichols this morning, God. Bring healing into his body. Touch Sherry, Lord, and Cindy, God. Lord, you're well able, God, to supply the miracle and the healing, God, that's needed there. Touch Tiffany this morning, God. Lord, heal her body, God. Touch Annette today, God. Heal her body. Lord, minister, God, to Jesus Rivera, God, and Jesus Soto, Lord. God, minister to those needs, God. Open up doors that need to be opened, God. Lord, make a way, God, where there needs to be a way made, Lord. God, the needs that have come up for healing today, Lord, stretch forth your hand, God, and heal, Lord. God, hear from heaven, Lord. You said when your people call by your name, humble themselves and pray, Lord, that you hear from heaven, God. Amen. And you answer their prayer. You heal their land, God. Lord, touch their bodies, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, we claim the blood, Lord, that flowed from your back, God. By your stripes, Lord, you are healed. Amen. The word says, God, thank you for the promises, Lord. Your kindness leads me to repentance. Your goodness draws me to your side your mercy calls me to be like you your favor is my delight every day I'll awaken my praise and pour out a song from my draws me to your side 
your mercy cause me to be like you your favor is my
would you give to us unconditionally, Lord, every day, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We enter into 2019 thanking you, Lord, with a grateful heart today. Thanking you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy. We love you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this is the day, Lord, that we have come to celebrate in your house your goodness and your mercy, your kindness, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. I thank you for this new year, God. I thank you for this first Sunday in 2019, God, that I can just say thank you, Lord. Even though we didn't deserve it at times, Lord, you extended it to us anyway. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing you gave to us. We thank you for being there with us, Lord, in those trials, Lord, that we were put through, God. You were with us, Lord. We did not stand alone, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Let's don't get in a hurry. Let's just all just give the Lord some praise. Thank you, Lord, for entering into this place with your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our gifts, God, that you've given us. For you are a worthy God. We praise you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you make all things new. Thank you for this new year. We have a fresh start. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Let's just give the Lord a big hand clap that we are grateful. We are grateful. We are thankful today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for visiting with us in such a special way on this first Sunday, God. We love you, Lord. I put my hands up to you in surrender, oh God. Whatever you want from me in this year, God, I surrender my all to you, God. 
I give my all to you, Lord Jesus. I go into this Sunday for the rest of the year, God, saying, Lord, I am a vessel for you, oh God. I may not have the talent, oh God, but Lord, I am a willing vessel, Lord. Use me for your service, God. Use us, God. Use this church, God. Use the people in this church, God, to minister, Lord, to the world, to minister, Lord, to the community, God. That's why we were planted here, God. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord Jesus, with boldness, Lord, to do your work this year, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, son of the Lord. Thank you, God. You're so great. You are so worthy, God. We are so privileged to be here today. Standing in your presence, oh God. Each and every one of us, Lord, can feel you in a special way, God. And it's up to us how much we want of you, God. But Lord, pour it on me. Lord, pour it on me. Give me all, Lord, that you have for me, God. Lord, I want all, Lord, more of you in my life, Lord. More of you, God. Use me, God. Use this church, oh God. Use each and every one of us. Give us a fresh burning and a desire, oh God, to reach out to this world, oh God. Thank you, God. You are good. You are great. You are merciful and you are kind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We love you. God is good. Can you say, God is good all the time. I don't know what 2018 brought you, but in 2018, it brought us sadness. But you know what? In sadness, God gave us joy. And whatever life throws at me, I always want to push that sadness away and those trials away and, and get over and let everything go that tried to hinder my walk with God. I just want to keep pushing forward. I just want to keep going and moving on with the Lord. And I know that that's what your desire is. You know, God gave us wonderful gifts, and that is the gift to children. And I'm so thankful that in our life, in 2018, when things were sad, God knew exactly what we would need, and He brought us a precious little baby. And I remember when I had Trenton, that was another sad time. I had lost my grandpa. But in the midst of your sadness, Trenton was right there, and He brought the family joy and laughter in the midst of our sorrow. And that's what children do. You can be having an awful, sad day, and a child can just come up and give you a kiss and say, I love you, and then that just makes everything better. But God gave this church blessings, a lot of children. And today we're going to get to see some of your children. It's the nursery and the pre-school, uh, not pre-K class. They're going to have a baby parade so everybody can sit down. I think there's a music back there that Brother James has. And when Brother James gets that going, we're going to let these uh, babies, toddlers march through. And y'all just thank the Lord for the blessing of these children. There's life in this church. Can you get the music going? Bring it up. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom for the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I'm in the Lord's army. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never zoom for the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. 
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I got a couple of announcements to make, being that this is the first Sunday of the month. We'd like to uh, just remind everybody that on January 26th, there will be a service. That is a Saturday, on January 26th. The service will start at 11 a.m. Uh, we, we're trying to invite everybody to wear your Reach Mission shirt that day. Um, it's going to be a, a, casual, a casual attire, so bring your, your T-shirts. There's going to be preaching that day. It's going to be a regular service, but there's going to be tag team preaching. We're going to have a lot of the missionaries tag team preach. The service is geared towards healing and deliverance. So if you know anybody who might be sick in their body, who needs healing, anybody who's sick in their body, they need deliverance, please invite them. Please bring them with you. If you know somebody who needs it spiritually also, some people just need the physical touch. Other people need the spiritual touch. Whatever kind of, whatever kind of healing or deliverance that they might need, it's going to be in this house. It's going to be that day. It's here now. If you need it now, don't misunderstand what I'm trying to tell you. I'm just saying for that day, it's not just going to be a regular preaching and somebody come up and explain the mission field that they're working in. No, it's going to be geared towards healing and deliverance. Can I get an amen? The kids zone will be uh, ministering in that service as well. So if you have any kids that attend kids zone, please bring them. Bring them early so they can get uh, set up so they can minister to everybody. Amen. It's always a good time to hear, to see them and, and have them minister to us. Following the service on the 26th, we don't want anybody to leave or anybody to go grab lunch anywhere. We'd like for you to break your diet here. We're going to have Frito Pies for everybody. It's going to be free. It's not going to cost anything. But we'd like for everybody in the church family to stick around, have a good time of fellowship, a good time getting to know each other, a good time of unity. Can I get an amen? amen. That day, also after the service, there will be a snow machine. They're going to have snow coming out. I don't know where they're going to spray it at. The only thing I can tell you is wear clothes that you can get wet in because the snow melts and you're going to get wet. Okay, just, just keep that in mind, please. I'd like to explain something um, just because I don't think that I've, I've, I've been able, I've explained it correctly. Every single service on Sunday mornings, we ask that uh, the parents give their children that are going to Sunday schools, give them coins. The reason that we want coins, uh, pennies, nickels, dimes, half dollars, whatever you can give them. The reason we do that is because on, 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 on Sunday morning at the Missions Reach Conference, we have all the children walk in, and they walk in, and they drop all their coins into, into the makeshift Ark of the Covenant right here. And it's always a blessing. It's always a big blessing to the children, first off, because of the instruction that's being given to them. They're being brought up, and they're being trained in the ways of the Lord. We believe in, we believe in giving that the word of the Lord will spread around the entire earth. Is that correct? Amen? So what we like is for every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, Give coins to your children, not just the first, not just the last Sunday, but every Sunday morning. If you got any pennies lying around, if you got any nickels, dimes, quarters, and they're going to take it to their Sunday school class. And on that day of the missions conference day, what they do is they split them up and they give them to the kids in little cups. And then that way they can all have something to give. It's always, it's always, um, it's always something not to have anything to give. It always hurts somebody. It, I know it hurts me when I can't give nothing. So just, just keep that in mind. That's the reason. I just wanted to explain that. It's every Sunday. Give your coins because they're going to missions. Amen. We have a video of a, of a, of, that we'd like to play this morning to help promote the REACH conference. Um, but if you if just, it's going to play it. Uh, go ahead and play the video, brother. I believe one of the greatest opportunities that we have is raising a family on the mission field. There are so many great opportunities that our kids have to be involved in missions as well. Our daughter is closely involved in missions. Both of our children receive the Holy Ghost at a young age. I'm actually an MK. I was raised in Bolivia, South America, so I've done missions since I was nine years old. Um, and I did not expect to become a missionary wife myself. I had my plans made out for uh, living in the States, being a pastor's wife or whatever. But when the door uh, became open to us to come to Spain, we decided to go through it and just to see what would happen. Not necessarily that we were feeling a direct call to Spain at that point. But like my husband mentioned, we struggled with it in the beginning. And after a while, the Lord began to really confirm that burden in our lives. 
and we began to see revival uh, break forth in Spain and began to fall in love with the people and the culture and we just really couldn't imagine leaving and the Lord really confirmed that burden and uh, so we decided okay let's put in our application if headquarters thinks that we should be here I guess that'll be God's will and so we put that in prayerfully and um, to see what would happen and before we knew it I mean it was fast sailing we were appointed and we've been here 15 years over this past year, we've seen over a thousand people baptized in the name of Jesus and over 850 filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Our focus has been starting new daughter churches. We now have over 70 churches and preaching points. And on a national level, we are focusing on every church starting, starting a daughter church by the year 2020. So we're believing that we're going to continue to grow and, and multiply uh, every year with that strategy. It's been a focus of our church personally here in Barcelona, the church that we pastor downtown Barcelona. We have worked to start new daughter churches, and over the last few years we've started seven daughter churches, and we're hoping to start two more daughter churches by the year 2020. We believe that this is the only way that we can really truly reach the metropolitan city of Barcelona and many of our larger cities is to start more daughter churches. I can have a church of a thousand people, but in a city of a million, it really makes little impact. So we're believing that God is going to help us to start even as many as 100 churches in downtown Barcelona. One of the reasons why we feel that the miraculous is so important here in Spain and in Europe is that we are facing a people that are agnostic or atheist. And so I believe that they must see a demonstration of the power of God in order to believe that there even is a God. I was in one service where a man had been invited to the church. He came and uh, he was really not sure if he believed in God or not. But the first thing that he saw God do that night was open a lady's blind eye. She had been blind completely in one of her eyes and she came up as a first time visitor. And as we laid hands upon her, that blind eye immediately opened. The next person that we prayed for was a man who was deaf in one of his ears. As we prayed, that ear popped open and that person began to, to shout and to dance and thank God for what had happened. And this man who was uh, agnostic at best began to just be blown away that this could actually happen. And it was something that opened up his understanding that there is a God. That is one of the reasons why we intentionally focus on seeing a demonstration of the miraculous in every service. Because we believe that through a demonstration of the miraculous, people will come to an understanding of who Jesus Christ really is. Blessed and exalted be the name of Jesus, for because his, his name alone can give healing. His name alone can bring true healing. It's not a magician's work. It's not no show. It's not a trick. Those healings happen, and they happen here, too. They've happened in the church. People have been healed in the church. We believe in a God that does miracles. We believe in a God that's living. He's doing well. And his love for us, it's uncomparable to anything. He alone is God. Do you believe that this morning? Praise the name of Jesus. As you come to your feet, I'd like to welcome every single one of our guests who have come out this morning to worship the Lord with us. Thank you so much for making time to come out here this morning. As you bring your tithes and offering, I'd like to remind everybody to go around, show yourself friendly, introduce yourself to every single person that you have not met. And if you, if you have in your heart's desire to receive from the Lord this morning, the Lord is willing and faithful to give unto you what he has purposed for you this morning. Do you believe that this morning? Lord, I come before you this morning to give you praise, honor, and glory, to thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, oh God, for giving us the revelation of your name. The power of your name is with us, and with that power, we only want to exalt, glorify, and magnify your name. Bless the tithes and offering. Bless every single person that gives and those that can't give. I pray, oh Lord, an abundance of prosperity over their life, oh God, and I pray in Jesus' mighty name, you use these tithes and offering for your glory, for your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, be it so.
Hallelujah. I'm glad to go into this new year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My strength is in the name of Jesus. My help is in the name of Jesus. My salvation, it is in the name of Jesus. My deliverance, it is in the name of Jesus. Our provision, is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. It's not the name of the company we work for. Hallelujah. It's in the name of Jesus. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is my help. Jesus is my way maker. Jesus is the one that hears my cry and attends unto my prayer. Jesus is the strong tower that we run into and we are saved. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus, 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 hallelujah. There's no greater place to run than to that strong tower, unmovable tower, a foundation that's unshakable. No matter how much shaking goes on in this world, there's a foundation that is unmovable. He's called the rock. He's called the rock of ages. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last. And when heaven and earth passes away, he said his word will never pass away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad to be built upon the name of Jesus, upon a foundation that is everlasting? Amen, amen, amen. Well, everybody that's enjoyed lounging around and eating like a king, doing nothing, it's over. It's over. We're in a new year. 
We had fun. We enjoyed the holidays. We enjoyed kicking into that mode of that season where you just take it easy and enjoy and have fun. And, but it's over. We're in a new year, and it's time to get down to business. It's time to get our eyes on the things of the kingdom of God. It's time to utilize the fresh moments that are new in this new year and to focus and unity on the things of God. This might be our last year. We may not make it through this year. And I think that as we are in the first large day, Sunday of this new year, that we ought to take a moment and say, if this is my last year, how would I want to serve God? If you knew I'm not talking about the coming of the Lord. I really believe the Lord's coming very soon. I really do. I really do with all of my heart. With everything that's within me. Spirit of God that's in me. I really believe the Lord is coming so very, very soon. But if you knew this was your last year. How would you serve the Lord. As a pastor of this church, I want us to go into this year with that mindset, thinking if this is it, how would I serve in the kingdom? Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to the missions conference. It's coming up very soon. That is one of the highlights of our year. It's at the beginning of the year, January. This year I want it to be the best we've ever had. I expect great things in God. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a snow day. There's going to be snow out here and the grass on the side right here on the side of the building. Kids can have fun. You can have fun. It's going to be an exciting day. Worshiping the Lord with our missionaries on that Saturday and fellowshipping. And then that Sunday being a great time in the Lord. This year, this year, I want us to live this year like it's our last. And let's see the mighty hand and power of God moving in us. Through us. And to the people around us. 2019. Don't forget, tonight is our communion service. Very special time. We want it to be a very special time. Not to be like a routine service, not to be like going through the motion. Because if you read in Scripture about communion, it tells you the reason many people are dead today is because they went through communion and they didn't reverence and respect and really submit themselves unto the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a very special, very special time in the Lord. And tonight we want you to come. And we're going to have communion and we're going to just 
allow the Lord to do whatever He wants to do in us. Amen. So don't forget the service tonight. Genesis chapter 11, and I'm reading verse 6. It is so good to see all of you. Amen. I think the holiday season is one of the hardest seasons for a pastor. Because you wonder what happened to everybody. And where everybody went. Amen. And I'm so glad to see everybody, have everybody back in the church. Genesis 11 and verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They have all one language. And this day, and this they began to do, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. The beginning of this, I, I didn't give them the scripture, I'm just going to read it from my Bible. If you have an open Bible, I'm going to verse 1. The whole earth was one language. And one speech. On this first Sunday, 2019, speaking to you with our, our title, our motto this year Keep in Touch. Keep in Touch. Do y'all remember what last year's motto was? Anybody remember? Reaching higher. Praise. Deeper in love. Y'all remember that back last year. Deeper in worship, that's it. Deeper in worship. And it was greater in love. But this year, I really feel that this is, this is what the Lord is speaking to this church, this body, this assembly. Keep in touch. Lord, we love you and praise you. Thank you so much for our brothers and our sisters. Thank you for the church body, the church family. Speak your word to our heart. Lead us. Go before us. And everybody say in Jesus' name, shake hands with someone before you're seated. <clears throat> You can be seated. God bless you. <clears throat> well, I want to say welcome to a new year of blessings, to a new year of harvest, to a new year of revival, to a new year of prosperity, to a new year of deliverance, to a new year of healing. Somebody say, the wagons are coming. The wagons are coming. Amen. If you weren't here Wednesday, I ask you to go online, watch the, the message Wednesday night, go on Facebook, to the Facebook page, the church Facebook page or our page, and, and watch the message from Wednesday night. Amen. It's about a new year attitude. A new year attitude. That means we need to let the past be the past. Whatever you didn't get in the past, believe for this year. Amen. Believe for this year. Look forward with expectation, with an attitude change of how you are looking into this new year. I rejoice in a new year. I rejoice in a new year that the Lord has given you. He has given me. He has given us. I rejoice in a new year of blessings. Somebody say amen. Amen. I rejoice in a new year of opportunity to work in the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. I rejoice because God has blessed us with each other. Somebody say amen. 
Somebody say amen. Aren't you glad that the Lord has blessed you with others around you? In 2019, thank God for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Because we have each other and the Lord, we are going to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God this year. Because we have each other and the Lord, we're going to build greater. We're going to climb higher. We're going to receive things greater than ever before. We're going to reach further than we've ever reached before. Hallelujah. Because we have the help of the Lord and we have one another. Amen. My mind began to take me back to the book of Nehemiah. And in the book of Nehemiah, you read about the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem in Nehemiah. And this is what they said. They said, let us rise up and build. And I say, let us rise up and build. That's not me. That's not my wife. That's all of us. Let us rise up and build the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Rise up together. The title of this message, the title is our motto. It is our slogan. It is our vision for this church for 2019. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. I'm going to keep that before you. I'm going to continue talking about it. I'm going to continue as a leader working on this. Our God-ordained goal for 2019 is to work on strengthening the cohesiveness of unity between each other and God. As a pastor, as a watchman, on the wall, I really sincerely feel in the Holy Ghost this is the greatest need of this year. The greatest need of this year. Jesus spoke of the two most important commandments. The first two commandments, love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. And he said, the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the law and the prophets. If you get this, you've got it. If you get this, You've got the heartbeat. And Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one for another. Hallelujah. One of the worst things that we can do in a family is to not be there for our family. The Bible says that we're worse than an infidel. We're not there for the needs of our family, our own family. He put us into a category we're worse than an infidel. The greatest need is to be there for your family. Hello. Come on. Hallelujah. For your family. And next to that is be there for your church family. The church family. Hallelujah. It's one of the greatest needs upon this earth. The writer of Hebrews identified the greatest struggle in spiritual warfare in the end time hour. In Hebrews 10 and 25, he said, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. As the manner of some is. Exhort one another. 
and so much more as you see that end time approaching. How many believe we are really in the end time? Hello. As you see it, as you see what's going on in this world, as you see the evil as it has increased like it has, as you see the chaos, the confusion, and the division, as you see in this end time hour, he said, whatever you do, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as some are doing and so much more as you see that even end time day approaching. Do not forsake the assembly. Do not forsake one another as you see that happening. There is no doubt. There is a loud warning that is coming from the news. I hear it every day. I see it every day. I, I listen to the news 7.40 a.m. all the time when I'm in my vehicle. I read the paper almost every morning. I'm on my iPhone looking at the news. Listen to me. There is a loud warning coming from the news that our lines of division are even widening greater than they've ever been before. Our nation is more divided than it has ever been. Hate and disunity is the hot topic of this hour. Sin and iniquity is on the increase. Christian principles and values are under fire as never before. There is an evil that is at work to tear down our families, tear down our nation, because a nation divided against itself cannot stand. A family divided against itself cannot stand. Uh, come on, a church divided against itself cannot stand. And we see greater than ever before forces that are at work to bring division Matthew 24 and 12 because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold the love of many the love of many the love of many I declare we must not let this spirit get into the church we must not let this spirit get into this church. Hallelujah. If you've ever prayed a prayer, you need to pray the prayer I'm praying. Unite with me in our vision. Unite with me in what I'm praying about. Do not, come on, do not forsake this assembly. We've got to be together in cohesiveness. There's got to be a strength greater than we've ever had to withstand the evil attack that we are in right now, in this hour, in this generation. You hear the sound of voice crying out unto our nation saying we have a problem we have a problem we are more divided than we've ever been before hallelujah you need to pray with me and when you pray and say God protect this church from sheaves protect this church from wolves that are dressed in sheep's clothing do not let People come into and began dividing, began, come on, because it is a destruction. It is a destroyer. It tears down. It breaks down a continuity, a unity. Right. Right. Hallelujah. We must connect with each other like never before. And we must connect with God like never before. Hallelujah. When we are truly connected with God, oh, I promise you, He helps us be unified with each other. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost is that unifier. It is that uniter of the body. The Bible says where sin abounds... Grace doth much more abound. Unity must much more abound. 
Hallelujah. As sin is getting greater and on the increase, unity and in the power of God must become stronger than ever before. In God's words, he tells us in the book of Genesis about the power of unity. Reaching back, Genesis chapter 11, the whole earth was one language and one speech. He said in Genesis 11 and 6, the people are one. They have all one language. And this they began to do, and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing can restrain them. Nothing can stop them. Nothing can hinder them when they're one. When they're one. When the people are one in burden. When the people are one in purpose. When the people are one in determination. They're one in effort. Nothing can restrain them. Tell your neighbor, thank you. Just say thank you. Because of you, we're going to be blessed this year. Hallelujah. Because of you, we are going to be blessed this year. In this scripture, God was speaking about those that were building the Tower of Babel. And we know it was in rebellion against God. Hello? They were in rebellion against God. But if they that are unified in a purpose to rebel against God can accomplish as much as they were able to accomplish as they were one, how much more can we, the people of God, accomplish when we work together in God's will and in God's purpose, God's way? Hallelujah. How much more? How much more? Hallelujah. This vision that I have for this year is to activate everyone into connecting. Activate everyone to connecting and bringing that cohesiveness of unity. So we can all experience greater things in the mighty power of God. Unity is our task. If the people are one, nothing will stop them. Unity is our role. If the people are one, nothing can restrain them. Satan knows what brings division. Do you know what divided That angelic rim, pride. Pride was the name that was put upon it. Pride is the key to division. It is the key to destruction. It is the key to demolition. Proverbs 16 and 18 said, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Mark 3 and 25, Jesus said, if a house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to me. Humbling ourselves one to another and humbling ourselves in the presence of God is the greatest thing that we can do in this hour and in this generation. The single most powerful thing that we can actually bring to the work of God is unity. A humble spirit in unity. That is the single most powerful thing that we can bring to the kingdom of God. Prayer and faith are very, very, very powerful. They are very great and they are very important. But unity goes beyond the power of an individual's faith and an individual's prayer. Unity multiplies the power that each other has with a factor that God puts in and says, I put my favor upon it. 
Hallelujah. I want God's favor. I want God's favor. I want God's favor. When you do the math in the Word of God, Leviticus 26 and 8, and it gives you an illustration here of God being in something. Five of you shall chase a hundred. And a hundred of you will put ten thousand to flight. And your enemy will fall before you by the sword. First, God says five will chase a hundred. That's pretty awesome in itself. Five of you have the power of twenty. But then he says a hundred. Come on, somebody, we're multiplying now. We're multiplying the power of people and numbers. He said a hundred of you will put 10,000 to flight. Now then, each one has a power of 100. That is a 400% increase in power. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching about the power of unity. I'm preaching about the power of God's favor in the midst of his people because they are in unity in God's mathematic formula of unity. The greater the increase of unity, the greater the increase of power. Hallelujah. When you get three people together and they unify, great things happen. And if you get five people together, they unify, greater things happen. If you can get 20 people together, they unify, greater and greater things happen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we started this church, I'll never forget the unity that we had. I'll never forget. There wasn't a lot, but the little we had had faith that connected, that bonded. It was a cohesiveness, I'm telling you. And because of that, my God, God, things happen. The power of God moved. Miracles, things happening. Hallelujah, because there was a cohesiveness. It grew in number. The cohesiveness grew. We got into that new building. It grew in number. The cohesiveness grew. Hear me today. Hallelujah. But hear me. If it comes to a place, amen, where it's bigger than me. Over there, I could stand in the foyer and I could connect with every single person. And that small building... I could connect. I could go out to eat with everybody. We could all go to my house. I could work on that. And my reaching of my strength, of my helping God. But what happens is, as a church grows, it starts getting beyond my ability. My wife and I, I can't catch everybody now. I can't make that connection. I can't bring that cohesiveness. I've got to have a body. As we've moved into this church, there's so many doors. There's so many outlets. Uh, Hear me today. Sometimes I come to church, I don't even see y'all out there because my mind's on so many things and I'm not seeing exactly where everybody's at. I don't even know you. Some of you, I'm calling, tell you I missed your church. You said, I'm there. And you're talking about feeling crazy. Hallelujah. The greatest need since we have moved into this church. Now hear me. Just just let me talk to you as a pastor. We have gone in circles. I have been wearing myself slap out. And I'm sitting here saying, man, it's not something. Something is going on. Something has happened. There's uh, that continuity. Hallelujah. Spirits are trying to come in. Sheeps, I mean wolves and sheep's clothing. And things start happening. Because Satan knows if that church ever unites right now. If that body connects right now with this cohesiveness, with God's hand and power and favor, friend, things will happen like you have never seen before. Hello. Hallelujah. 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 And so my my, my, my vision this year it's how we get everybody activated into connecting and bring in this unity. Help this weight distribute among all of us to where it's not just one person carrying all the load. Amen. Not just one person in the multimedia back there working himself, trying to carry the load every service. Uh, hear me. We, we've got to have the help of each other. We've got to have each other working together. We've got to have each other laboring together. We've got to have each other working on having a continuity so that 
that we can experience the mighty power of God that he has purposed for this church. Hallelujah. Y'all have heard the word enabler? Enabler. Anybody read any books, counseling books, anything like that? You, anything codependency and stuff like that? You'll, you'll find this word enabler because there are enablers in people's lives. Enablers in the home, people that are dysfunctional, other people enable them to stay dysfunctional. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about? You, heard, you know what I'm talking about? By, by the way you treat them, by things you do for them. Enabler of an alcoholic, you enable them to continue doing what they're doing. Enable of somebody that's on drugs, drug addict, amen, we enable them to continue. We call the enabler. We need to be an enabler to unity. An enabler to unity. An enabler to assembling of togetherness. An enabler. Parents, do not enable your children to disconnect. Do not enable them to be disconnected. Teach them unity. Whatever you do, teach them unity for the sake of something bigger than they are. For the sake of a kingdom of the Almighty God. For the sake of a church. For the sake of a church's future. Enable them. Be an enabler to unity. An enabler to working together. An enabler. Don't let the burden of unity and connecting with others and keeping in touch sit upon the shoulder of the others. Let it sit upon you. Are y'all with me? Come on. I'm preaching and I'm fighting against the forces of this end time hour and that spirit that is out there that is working in a measure greater than you've ever imagined. That spirit wants to ensnare you and ensnare your children. It wants to tear down and it wants to destroy. Hello. Connect. Connect like you have never connected before. Go out of your way. Hello. Man, I'm coming against pride right now. I'm coming against the spirit of selfishness right now. Go out of your way to connect to others. Go out of your comfort zone. I know we all have personalities. And and I know all about that stuff as a counselor. Temperaments, melancholy temperament, sanguine temperament. Cleric temperament, supine temperament, and the temperaments we all have, and some have a temperament to, you know, they, they like to just kind of be alone and listen to me. We need to rally for a cause of the kingdom of God in the name and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ and get out of our comfort zone and connect. Get out of your little groups. Some people, they just, they need their little group, you know, and that us four and no more. And we got to break that. We've got to get out of that. This is one of the things through the years of time as I grew up in churches. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. That means when you're in church, oh yeah, you're going to have friends and you're going to have people, they connect with you and the things in common and, and all of that stuff. And, but, but listen to me, when you're at church, break out of that get connect get out of your comfort zone get out of your groups and connect with others use your gifts use your talents use your creativity and keep in touch 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 connect 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 we all read about the gifts of the spirit and the gifts of healing gifts of faith gifts of tongues gift of interpretation of tongues and Gifts of prophecy, and you read of all the gifts in the Word of God. But you know what he says? He says there's one that you need to seek more than any of these other gifts. And that is that you excel in building up the body. Excel. The gift that's greater than all these other gifts is a gift of building up the church by just 
connecting by being a unifier that is the greatest thing that we can ever have the greatest thing a church can ever have because when it is unified as one favor of God comes upon it the power of God begins to move and all of those other gifts become in operation and begin working come on as you seek the gifts he said seek that you may excel in this gift and that is just connecting, unifying. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't wait for others to make contact with you. Hello. Come on. 2019, this is it. This is it. Don't wait for others to make contact with you. Don't put all the burden on others to make contact with you. You make contact. With them. Everybody say this with me. Not ever now and then. Not once a month. Not just when it's convenient. But continually. 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 I want you to make notice of the people that are around you. I want you to notice those that are sitting around you and in front of you and behind you. And I want you to notice those people that really don't stand out. They slip in, go to church, notice them, notice them, notice them, notice them. Connect, 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 connect. I need every person. I need everyone. We need to connect like never before. All the time, connect. Get to know them. Get to know their name. Keep in touch. If you don't have a directory, you need to have a church directory. You need to get to connect, get to know people. Amen. Say this with me of all ages. All ages. All ages. All people. All statuses. Come on, no matter who they are, how much they make. All nationalities. This is what brings God's favor. This is what brings God's favor. This is what brings God's favor. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. Unity is not the results of revival. Revival is the result of unity. Revival is the result of of unity. Unity is when the people are one. Nothing can be restrained from them. If you're living on the fringes, in a, a zone of looking over the fence, man, <laughs> how many of y'all driving down the road and sees that cow? Head stuck through the fence. Some of them out of it. But I'm going to tell you the truth, the exact truth of the way it is. The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you put your water. Hello. You want green grass? Start watering. Start watering. When Jesus acted as our intercessor, in a role of an intercessor, and praying as our great high priest, who was to be offered as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world, very soon after the prayer, he didn't pray for revival. He didn't pray for great deliverance. He prayed for unity of the disciples. Unity. John 17 and 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which hath given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one. Hello. Come on, somebody. As he become an intercessor, and as he stepped 
into the intercessor's role. And he prayed as an intercessor. He said, the disciples, I'm praying that they may be one. I'm praying that they may be one. The disciples must be as one for the purpose of the kingdom of God to be fulfilled. And the only prayer request that Jesus gave to his disciples was for them to pray for the laborers to work in the harvest. Pray for laborers. Pray for laborers. Pray for laborers. What was his description in Matthew 9 and 36? When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they were weak and they were scattered. Hello? They were weak and they were scattered like sheep with no shepherd. And then he said unto his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray for the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the vineyard. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the greatest thing we need in this church is people that will labor with this purpose I'm laboring with. With the same purpose and the same vision for the harvest, for the kingdom of God. We've got to have a cohesiveness. We've got to have a unifying. There's got to be something that begins to strengthen the people that are weak and bring them into a unity that will unite them where they begin to function under a united power and under a united effort. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray for this purpose. This is where the glory and anointing of God dwells. When you read the story of the Dedication of Solomon's temple as they dedicated that temple. Do you know when the glory of God came in? Do you know when the cloud came in? The Bible says when the people were as one. And they were all singing the same song and speaking the same thing. The mercy of the Lord endureth forever. You wouldn't be here if it weren't for the blood, friend. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the blood of Jesus Christ. None of us would be here. Hallelujah. There's got to be a unity and a cohesiveness. When they were one, when the trumpeteers were one, when the singers were one, when the people were one, the glory of the Lord began to fill the house. There's nothing that brings a move of God more than unity. Unity with people united and looking at the blood of Jesus Christ and saying, had it not been for that old rugged cross... Had it not been for that blood that was shed, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be here today. Stay in touch. Ask the musicians to come. Don't get disconnected from the rest of the church. This year, Stay in touch. Don't be an outsider living on the fringe. Stay in touch. Share the responsibility. Share the load. Worship faithfully in the house of God. Hallelujah. More than ever before, more than ever before, listen to the watchman on the wall. More than ever before. Fight against the spirit. That says I'm not going to go to church. I'm not. I'm just not. Listen to me. Fight like you have never fought before. Because there's something more at work than what you understand. There's something more at work than what you understand. Because God knows the church needs you. The church needs unity. The church needs everybody. The church needs everybody in place. This is where the anointing is. This is where the glory of God dwells. I need you. You need me. We need the Lord. We've had some very anointed services in 2018. But 2019 can be even greater. It can be greater. Psalms 133 and 1. How good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. 
It's like precious anointment upon the head. Run down upon the beard and even upon Aaron's beard. It went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Where? Upon those were united. That was where that anointing came. In the Old Testament we read of anointing oil. When y'all come up here and we anoint you with oil, it's not because somebody just thought about, hey, let's get us some oil. And we do this for a purpose. The Word of God talks about an anointing oil. It talks about it in the New Testament. It talks about it in the Old Testament. An anointing oil. Exodus 30 and 22, moreover, the Lord spake to Moses, and he said, Take also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half that much, 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. He gives value in all of these, uh, an amount, how much, okay, this much money. But then he gets to something, and he says, and of olive oil, a hen. He didn't put a money value. This olive oil didn't have a money value. The other ingredients had a money value. The olive oil is the single ingredient that causes all of the other ingredients is to blend together and form one single unit that God says my power is going to work in. Hallelujah. There was no amount that was put upon that olive oil. Moses, whatever it cost, have plenty of olive oil. Whatever it cost. Hallelujah. It's like the Spirit of God that works inside of each and every one of us. And with that brings us together with our gifts, with our personalities talents brings us all as one whatever the price you've got to have the unity and there's no value you can put on that none the most valuable thing we have outside of the power of the Holy Ghost is unity as we are united in the power of His Spirit we are united in the power of God. It brings us together. It makes us something that God is able to sanctify and something God is able to use. An anointing that was used to anoint everything. They anointed the tabernacle. They anointed the Ark of the Covenant. They anointed the vessels. They anointed the ministers. They anointed everything with that anointing oil. There is something that we must have. This church must have. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. On this first Sunday message for the Pentecostal church of Atascacita. Hear me. We've got to have a unity for God's favor to be upon us. God's anointing to be upon us. And God began to touch everything. Every minister, every preacher, every musician, every song, every laborer, every usher, every single person. Hear me. God uses that. He uses is that First Corinthians 12 and 13 for by one spirit are we all baptized with one body whether we be Jew or Gentile whether we be bond or free we've been all made to drink unto one spirit for well, the body is not one member but many but that it was many becomes one 
Hallelujah. We become one in the Spirit of God. We become one in the power of God. Hallelujah. Keep in touch. Keep in touch with God. Keep in touch through prayer. Come on. Amen. Hear me. Hear me. We got to pray. You got to pray. I got to pray. We got to pray. We need to pray more than we've ever prayed before. Keep in touch with God. Keep in touch with God through prayer. Keep in touch with God through worship. Keep in touch with God through reading of the Word of God. Keep in touch with God through repentance. Keep in touch with God through forgiving your neighbor because you cannot touch the Lord if you don't release the people that you are holding a grudge against. Keep in touch. Humble yourselves before God. And God will lift you up. And God will lift us up. Hallelujah. Hi, this is Pastor Kevin Martin, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today, tuning in and being a part of our service. We hope that it was a blessing to you and that you were uplifted and encouraged and felt the presence of the Lord. If you would like to know more about our church, please join us at www.atascacitaupc.com and you will find all of the ministries. You will find pictures where you could take a journey and see everything that's been going on at the Pentecostal Church of Atascacita. And uh, we hope that you join us again very soon. God bless you.